Welcome to what has to be one of my favourite lighting showrooms in London, the John Cullen Showroom here on the King's Road in London. I'm joined today by Luke Thomas, Design Director at John Cullen, and I'm going to be playing the role of a client. It's a pet project of mine in London, and it's going to be an uncomfortable journey for me to relinquish control to other designers to help me design and fit out the space. So, Luke, first of all, thank you for being involved Welcome. in the project. Um, thank you for having us into your wonderful showroom and I'm in your capable hands and you can take me through the journey as if, oh well, I am, your client. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. I think um, maybe we start with the basics yep. and I can remind you about some of the key things to consider mm -hmm. with lighting and we can start in the pod. Amazing. Um, that's Love where your I pod. take all my clients to start with. So come on. As I said, this is a great place for explaining the basics of lighting and mm -hmm. how it works. I'll assume you know nothing. Yes, do. Um, just so I can it's a refresher course. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And then we'll look at your plans uh, separately. So to start with, in terms of uh, lighting, what we want to do is a very considered lighting layout mm -hmm. for you. What we're not doing is just a grid of down lights on the ceiling, because what that's going to do is give a very blanket uh, effect mm -hmm. onto your interiors. So everything would be evenly lit and nothing stands out from anything else. So we want to create de uh, te texture and depth, mm -hmm. so uh, a more layered approach. So what we've got at the moment is your grid of down lights on the ceiling, mm -hmm. and that's nicely lighting the floor, but the walls are left dark and the space feels quite small and enclosed. One good thing about what we're seeing here is that the, we're using a baffled light source. So from where you're standing now, you can look directly at this, Yep. And you're not getting any glare yeah, here at all. It's only when you're right underneath that you start getting the glare. So that's quite good. It's a reason why you would choose this product over another, because mm -hmm. when you walk into a room, your eyes will be naturally drawn to the brightest thing in that space. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to come into the room and then just be you know, looking up at the yeah. ceiling, because that's not going to be what you want as a, mm -hmm. an interior designer for people to see. You yeah. want them to see the furniture, the artwork, all the important things within the space. The other reason why we won't do the grid um, of down lights is not just because of this blanket of light, but it's not a very comfortable lighting mm -hmm. effect. If I stand underneath this, you see I've got the shadow yeah. under my eyes, under my chin, it's not very flattering um, and it's really uncomfortable. Um, so if we've got a seating area here, the last thing we want is for you to be sitting down and the spotlight to be on yeah. top of your head. That very uncomfortable. Glow on the top of your head and then yeah, shadowed effect the whole way down. Exactly. Okay. So some people might think, oh, we've got a sofa there and I want to read on the sofa. So mm -hmm. I'll put a spotlight above it, um, which you know will technically give you good light, but um, it's actually going to be very uncomfortable. Yeah. So a better way of doing that is using a, a table lamp or a reading light. So um, we're going to try and break away from this grid of down lights on the ceiling. And the first thing we'll do is use some directional light. So you can see here we're using the same light fittings or very similar, but we're just directing the light towards the walls. And what that's doing is opening up the space. It feels bigger and brighter mm -hmm. just instantly, uh, even though we're not actually using much more light. And we're also getting a softer reflected light back into the room. So now standing in the middle of the space is comfortable, yep. it's more relaxing, and it also feels brighter. And I guess that changes depending on the colour you have on the wall as well. So if you've got, uh, how does it work when you're using maybe oranges or reds on the wall? Does it change the glow you're getting on your... Yeah, it can do, yeah. yeah. You can um, reflect off those colours and enhance them using a good quality LED light mm -hmm. source. Colour rendering is important because you want to see the true mm -hmm. colours of the materials which you're lighting. So that's the reason why some of the higher quality LED products are more expensive. Yeah. Um, is because of the colour rendering and the colour quality. As an interior designer, you'll want to see the true colour of the fabrics that you're yeah. choosing and the artwork. Those things are really important to our clients and one of the reasons why they'll go for, for these down mm -hmm. lights. But again, this is not perfect. What you get from just directing the light towards the walls like this is um, these scallops of light, um, which are quite distracting. Um, so although we've improved on the grid of down lights, this is still not a John Cullen lighting scheme. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's not is because this is still you know, not very specific to you mm -hmm. as a homeowner and as the interior designer. What we're really going to be doing when we're building up our lighting plans is saying, you know, what actually is this eleva elevation going to be? Mm -hmm. you know, what is your plan for that space? If you're going to have three pictures on the wall, then this is perfect yeah. because we're going to have a light to highlight each one. But if you're going to have one picture in the middle, um, we actually just need one down light to light yeah. that. And then maybe we have a pair of wall lights either side, or we have a console table with a pair of lamps. So we're always thinking about your interiors specifically. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't design just based on a white box um, and then put our lighting into it. We really need to coordinate with you as the client and understand how you're gonna live yeah. in and enjoy this space. The next scene I'm gonna show you is a more layered lighting approach. 
So here you can see everything's been completely transformed. Um, what you're seeing is the depth and texture of the space. These materials on the wall here, mm -hmm. you probably didn't notice those before in the previous scene, but now that we've set the lights very close to them, they're skimming down. Yeah. And brings out the texture as well. Of brings out the texture, finishes. yeah. You get that um, definition between mm -hmm. light and shadow, yep. um, which is really interesting and intriguing. Mm -hmm. And then we've got these two miniature spotlights. This is the Pulse Spring 30. Uh, with a narrow beam and that's focusing light onto the sculpture. Mm -hmm. So when I mentioned earlier about your eyes being drawn to the brightest thing in the room, when you come in here that's the sculpture yep. and because the, the light source we've used is baffled and low glare, we don't notice the fit yep, in the ceiling. Well. Yep. Yeah. You almost can't tell it's on yep. and you just see the, uh, the image um, of the object that we're trying to illuminate. And you've cross-lit it so that you get this even light on, on the sculpture as well. Yeah, you could use a single light source and you get more uh, definition and contrast, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you want to see the object from multiple angles mm -hmm. so the cross lighting can work. Linear light sources um, we would be probably using in your project mm -hmm. as well because this is um, very fashionable these yeah. days is to use linear light sources. It's definitely more contemporary, more modern, mm -hmm. and they're so small and easy to conceal yeah. into architectural details like this ceiling slot here would then wash down the wall. This is probably too contemporary for your yeah. property. But we might use something like this underneath kitchen cupboards yeah. or maybe bathrooms where you've got drop ceilings. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then a recess is something that you might have in a bathroom mm -hmm. as well. So using a miniature spotlight in there is good. We actually have some natural mm -hmm. recess, recesses within the property as well, which are uh, architectural features. So these would work really well. Yeah, cool. Well, there you almost can't see that the the light is coming yeah. from the top because again, it's a baffled light source, mm -hmm. very low glare. Now the room feels completely different. It feels more relaxing, yeah. more atmospheric. You can imagine entertaining some friends are over, yeah. glass of wine, some music, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, so this is a good evening scene and um, we can actually take it a step further and we can introduce a night scene. So here we go. This is much more dramatic now. We've so got this is that lights. one spot on the the sculpture that you were talking about? This is a framing projector, this one. Okay. Um, so it's not um, a ceiling recess down light, it's a framing projector. So you can see that it exactly frames this artwork. Mm -hmm. So there's a small stencil or gobo inside uh, the projector there, and that will frame whatever piece that you put there. Okay. So you could do a sculpture like this, you could do a picture. Lights, nothing else, mm. just the piece. Yeah. It's quite um, yeah. magical, really, mm -hmm. very discreet. And then the uplights um, are really interesting. Um, most of the time we see light coming down mm -hmm. into spaces. So the sun above us, casting shadows yeah. downwards, ceiling recessed um, spotlights in your home, again, casting light downwards. Mm -hmm. When we see uplights like this, it's quite visually intriguing yeah. because all the shadows are in reverse. So it really catches your eye, uh, creates a point of interest and really adds drama to your late night yeah. scenes. And the niche here, which I previously showed you yeah. with the down light, we now have the up light behind. So you put the object into silhouette. Mm -hmm. And looking at that now, I'll switch between the two again. It almost it's feels like you're looking at a different object. Yeah. And it's only the position of the light source. Yeah. And that's why our role as lighting designers is really important because it's not just choosing the right product, mm -hmm. it's positioning it as well. So obviously we know the range of products inside out and we can uh, apply that to your, your property to make the most of the lighting scheme. And let me just switch back to what we had at the start, which is your grid of down lights. And yeah. this is what most people have in their homes. Yeah. And you can see the room now just feels lifeless yeah. and flat and dull and- Might as well be in a sort of a surgery waiting room. Yeah. yeah. So if you can use light in a considered way, like I've shown you in this mm. blank box, Imagine what you can do in your apartment with all the finishes and the furniture and the artwork. Playing with, or highlighting the textures, the colors, the mm. materials. It's really gonna yeah. bring it to life. So Amazing. let's go into the showroom. I'll show you some of these effects in situ. Great. In the different room sets that we Amazing. have. Amazing. So now we're out in the main part of the showroom. We mm. have these different room sets. So this is the library area or drawing room. Does the art come with us? The art doesn't come with it. No. Not the art. Oh, the yacht, no. no. <laughs> okay, shame. I'm afraid not. But these are where we're applying the principles that I, sh I showed you in the mm -hmm. pod into real life applications. So the first thing you'll notice is, again, we haven't got a grid of downlights on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And here by the sofa, I can comfortably sit here without a downlight yeah. on top of me. And 
the amount of light is plenty fine. Yeah. We've got the coffee table, which is lit in front of me. Mm -hmm. So that creates a central focus. Yeah. And if you've got some nice flowers, then mm -hmm. you can highlight those. It works really well. We do have three down lights along this elevation here. Now, the reason we've got three down lights is because there are three sections yep. to the bookcase. And if we had four sections, then actually we might have four down lights. So we're thinking about what is that down light going to highlight, and then we're going to apply it um, appropriately. We also have behind you the artwork being lit using a directional down light in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So we can really pick that off the wall uh, and bring it to life. So we also have on the joinery here, the up light on top of the unit there. So that is a really simple thing to do. It's just an LED strip on top of the, on top of the unit. Is but it, it an angled bead back or? It's, this one's literally just going straight up. Okay. You can do angled profiles as well to push the light into the room um, a little bit more. But this one here is just to accentuate the ceiling height. Mm -hmm. And I can see if I turn that off, suddenly- the, Everything comes down. The ceiling feels lower yep. and the space feels darker as well. Mm -hmm. So if you have a little bit of space above your kitchen units or your wardrobes, then adding that in can make a big, yeah. big difference. And it's so easy to do. So that's quite a nice considered lighting layout, but it's a little bit flat. You know, yep. This would be a really simple lighting solution. We can start to look at integrating lighting into the joinery unit, mm -hmm. which is where you start to get some really interesting lighting effects. First thing you'll notice here is there is a difference between what we see on the right hand side and yep. the left hand side in terms of the color. Probably notice it mostly on these top shelves yep. here. That's the color temperature. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm much more drawn to the warmer tones yeah. than I am to the cooler tones. The color that you choose could be dependent on the materials mm -hmm. which you're using. Here we're mostly lighting white or very light finishes. But if you have wood finishes, then that can add some warmth to the mm -hmm. lighting effect. But the warm colors can be great to add atmosphere, yeah. uh, texture to your, to your space. And you can combine different color temperatures. So you might use something slightly warmer within the joinery. Yeah. And then your down lights could be slightly cooler. So and then we're not talking about warm white or cool white. Yeah. Because those terms are very broad. These are both warm white. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at is the Kelvins. Um, so this is uh, 2400 Kelvins. Mm -hmm. And this is 2700 Kelvin, okay. just to give you an idea of what you're looking at. But yeah, here the, the lighting is integrated into the shelving. Um, this is uh, an LED strip. And what you'll notice is that you don't see the light source directly mm -hmm. because it's concealed from view. That is absolutely critical when you're looking at designing your joinery units. Yep. Um, Especially if you're sitting close by. Yeah. So sitting could be at a lower level. Yeah, you don't, you don't see the, the light source at all. Yeah, and so then what you actually see are the objects on mm. the shelf. And those are the important things to you, not some LED strip. So concealing is really important. That's where we'll be coordinating with you probably further down the line. Yeah. Once you've designed the joinery, we'll come along and we'll, we'll help you integrate it mm -hmm. and, and conceal it from view. But it's really important to consider surface finishes. If it's mirrored on the back, mm -hmm. then you may not do this effect because you'll just see a reflection, reflection of the light. So there's other ways that you can light the shelves instead. So here, what we've done is we've just moved the light source to the back of the shelf. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same light, different position, but the shelf feels completely different. Yes. And the atmosphere in the room feels very different. Um, and it's very warm, uh, very soft. And more dramatic yeah. as well, yeah. I would say. Um, what you get is this um, silhouette effect onto the objects which you put on the shelf. But again, it's really important to consider you know, what's going on the shelf. What's going on the shelf. If you have a bank of books, they're going to block the light and then you're yeah. going to have a very different yeah. effect throughout. Very different effect. What we've got on the right hand side here is a new product of ours, which has won a lighting design award. Um, this is a miniature track system mm -hmm. and it's called the Vorsa Dot and the spotlights attached to the track magnetically mm -hmm. and you can so you move can them up and them. down and then you can highlight different objects mm -hmm. on your shelf and it's flexible. So if you move an object, you can move the light with it. As so well. I can pull. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, and then you can just move that up and down the track and then direct it effect. to light your piece of art. And I guess you can sit this in behind. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. This is retrofitted yep. onto the shelf, so you wouldn't always need this. To um, conceal it, yeah. This unit here. It's nice, I think, I guess if you know that there are certain shelves that you will have objects on display and that they may <coughs> change seasonally, for example, flowers or something else, you have the flexibility mm. to move it around as opposed to having fixed lighting. Yeah. What I really like is the combination of the linear mm -hmm. with, the, with the point source as well, because you get the soft backlighting yeah. from that linear light source and then the focus spot mm -hmm. uh, from the Vorsa dot. 
This is a new product as well called the Minim, mm -hmm. which is um, for joinery lighting. I think it's probably our smallest fitting. If you take a pen and you look at the end of a pen, mm -hmm. the diameter of it is the same as this, this spotlight. So really, really small and discreet, but it packs a, a punch, punch yeah. in terms of the light output. So it's great for lighting you know, glass objects like that, or you could create a very similar effect to this. So we've used that recently in a whiskey cabinet, mm -hmm. where again, you're using a, a linear for backlighting, and then the front of the whiskey bottle is lit using a minim as yep. well. So that uh, could be uh, really dramatic. Behind you here, this is the Luca, Luca 30, mm -hmm. um, and that's a, a floor recessed up light with a very narrow beam angle. So it can be used to accentuate uh, an architectural feature like the fireplace or a door frame or window reveals. Or any architraves or, yeah. yeah, okay. So this is what we call an accent light. Mm -hmm. And an accent light is there to accentuate a particular feature. It's something that which usually gets, it's the first thing to be cut because yep. of budget Budgets. constraints. Yep. But it's the thing that makes the biggest difference and creates that wow factor. Yep. So we can include something like that on mm -hmm. your project then that would be a good thing for us to do. And then above the coffee table, this is just a single, very narrow beam spotlight oh, to give you yeah. focus onto the table. Mm. Amazing, thank you. Okay. Onto the kitchen. Onto the kitchen. Here in the kitchen, one of your most immediate concerns will be ensuring that you've got good task lighting. Mm -hmm. and so one of your main task surfaces will be the kitchen island mm -hmm. that we have here. So the decorative lights are great um, at creating an interior focus, but for real functional lighting, some down lights above the, the island are a really good idea. Yeah. Even if you have the pendants to combine the two together, it uh, works really well. So these are a double square fitting, mm -hmm. which will provide you with lots of illumination down. You'll notice that they're set directly above the work surface. So we don't have lights above these areas where it's just a sort of a corridor space. And if we did, what would happen is the light would hit the back of your head and then Cast cause a the shadow, shadow onto the work surface. So it actually makes it harder to do mm -hmm. the tasks that you need to do uh, if you add more lights yeah. in. So they need to be carefully uh, considered Positioned. in terms of the position. And then we do have the directional down lights in the ceiling here as well. What we're using those for is to direct light towards the cupboard doors. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a really nice finish on those doors, then we can highlight that. Mm -hmm. um, if a little texture on the surface is great. Sometimes there's a wood grain mm -hmm. or a metallic finish, mm -hmm. which would be nice to illuminate but you get a nice sort of scallop of light on the top of the door there, and then that reflects light back into the room as well. Yep. It's really important that we need to look at your elevations mm -hmm. so that we can set the lights out based on the cupboard arrangement yep. and that we don't have you know, lights which are lighting sort of halfway across a cupboard door and it looks messy and undesigned. In terms of the shelf lighting or under cupboard lighting, there's a couple of options you can consider. Mm -hmm. The under cupboard light is one. Um, and this is uh, your more traditional approach. This will give you great working light onto your work surfaces. The difference between a normal under cupboard light and what you're seeing here is that this one has a small eyelid at the front mm -hmm. and that acts as a baffle. So when, when you, you look at the glare, yeah, the even though you're off. sitting down at a lower mm -hmm. level, looking up at the underside of the units, you don't get any glare from this. So that's why the eyelid is, is really useful. So you can run a series of those across mm -hmm. the shelf. Probably what's more popular these days is using a linear light source like here. Mm -hmm. And this can give you just as much task light. This is just one strip of LED. We'd always position this into an aluminium profile with mm -hmm. a frosted cover. And that's really useful in the kitchen because you can just then wipe it clean yeah. if there's grease or there's any other things that get spilt onto it. So then it becomes much more durable. Mm -hmm. The other reason you might do that is because of reflected surfaces. So sometimes you'll have a polished work surface mm -hmm. or you might have a polished glass splashback. Yeah. And if you see a reflection of an LED strip, dot, 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 yeah. that's horrible. Right, you so you want to see just a linear yeah. um, bar of light instead. So the frosted strip works really well for that. If you do have a reflective finish, it's quite good to put your light source very close to that surface mm -hmm. and that reduces your viewing angles to the light mm -hmm. source. So you'll just skim down that back wall there and it'll still provide you with really good working mm -hmm. light as well. So what we're seeing here is a combination of the linear and the undercovered lights. Um, and then you can see here just the linear on its own as well. We've also introduced the um, decorative lighting here as well. So this, the decorative lighting is not something that we actually supply mm -hmm. uh, at John Cullen, but it is something that we integrate within our lighting scheme. So if, we had, if there were particular decorative <laughs> pendants or chandeliers that I wanted to incorporate, they'd give you that specification and you would advise on one, are they appropriate, yeah. the right size, and then integrate it into the lighting scheme. 
Yeah, we'd um, show it on the plan and make sure that you could control the lights properly as well. Okay. And we'd also tell you if actually we thought it, was it wasn't going to work yeah. with the scheme because it might not supply enough mm. light or you might have selected something which looks really nice yeah. but actually doesn't give a very nice lighting effect. So as the lighting designers, we can comment on mm. that and help you choose something okay. appropriate. You'll probably see as well, just um, by your knees here, where you've got a bar Ooh. area, you can have a, a linear light source um, just to create an interesting glow of light to that space. It's really nice, it picks up on the texture as well of the fabric on the bar stools. Yeah. It gives you another layer and a, a, sense, a, a depth to the, to yeah. the scheme. Yeah, the fabric of the, the stools, mm. exactly. And also, if you turn it off, like I'm gonna do now, you can see that this space is just a really dark, yeah. dingy hole. Yeah. <laughs> And if you introduce that little bit of light, suddenly it brings it into the room and it's quite a good way of introducing a little bit of accent lighting because these days the kitchen is not just the kitchen where you want functional lighting. The kitchen is part of the living space and the dining area. Yeah. So you need this room to easily translate mm -hmm. into those other spaces. And while you're dining, you want soft atmospheric lighting. You don't want just down lights on in the kitchen. Yeah you need to have some way of changing the scenes. So the pendants work really well, the under bar lighting works really well as well. Um, and obviously then the different specifics for what we can do depending on the actual design yeah. of your kitchen. So yeah, these are the sort of ways that we would um, approach kitchen lighting. Plinth lighting, um, mm -hmm. you can use like the little Kazala fitting um, like we have down here. Um, or you can use a linear light source. Yep. This is probably a little bit more dated yep. these days. Not I also find that lights now. and highlights the dirtiest part yeah, of your the kitchen. Crumbs the crumbs from your toast. Yeah. Yeah. Your salt and your pepper from your cooking and all the chopped herbs that have managed to uh, find mm. their way to the floor. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. in my case, dog drool. Yeah. And hair as and well. And hair, yeah, yeah. just lights, everything that gathers in the yeah. plant area. So yeah, we, you know, typically we're not doing that, but it really depends on the style of the kitchen because if you've got a really contemporary kitchen, mm. then a linear light source at kick plate level mm. works really, really well. Yeah. Um, but if you've got more sort of a country kitchen, then actually this uh, these days looks like it, it, it is two design yeah. styles just jarring a little bit. Okay, can't mm. wait to see what you come up with for mine. Yeah, yeah, exciting. All right, shall we look at the drawings? Yeah. Okay, Brian, so what we're going to do now is start to look at your plan specifically. Mm -hmm. I need to really understand everything about this apartment. I need you to tell me how you're going to live in this space. Mm -hmm. um, talk me through the finishes, the fabrics, any furniture, any specific requirements that you've got. If there's a particular picture that you think needs illuminating, okay. then we need to do that. And also some of your preferences about how much light you think you need in certain areas and also any particulars that might be, you know, for you and, and how you want to actually live in this space. Okay. So if we can go room by room, mm -hmm. might be the best way to do it. Should we start in the bedroom here maybe? Yeah, so I, the, the flat's been reconfigured uh, to make it uh, a larger one bedroom apartment. Living spaces have been put to uh, the rear, which is southwest facing. So naturally uh, the bedroom is going to be a fairly dark space. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really lucky we have really tall ceilings. Uh, Very point, tall ceilings. Yeah, uh, 3.9 meters and the windows themselves <laughs> I think they get to about 3.5, 3.6. They'll have multiple window treatments on them, so there will be a blackout treatment. Yeah. There will be a, <laughs> which will be down just at night time. There will be a sheer treatment that is there and visible all the time. And then there'll be a decorative curtain treatment. The headboard is actually gonna sit in front of And that uh, runs window. all the way across from bedside table to bedside table. Exactly, yeah. So okay. it will it will almost mirror the width, not quite, but mm. almost the width <laughs> of the, the three windows. There's a desk area, a uh, wardrobe area, there's a TV on the wall. Mm -hmm. um, for the rare moments I actually get to enjoy some TV <laughs> and lay in bed. Ensuite, just off of it. So very spacious. If I can just go back to the bedroom mm -hmm. quickly, Brian, because you mentioned that it's you're worried about it feeling a dark space. Yes, yeah. And quite Especially with the headboard in front of it yeah. and the window treatments. And also concerned that it, it, because of the ceiling heights that we could end up with this very tall, narrow box. Mm -hmm. So I want to try and bring the eye down as much as possible with lighting treatments and, mm -hmm. uh, and soft furniture treatments to give it that layered approach. Well, we could use a really nice decorative hanging light mm -hmm. in the center of the room. That would help with that ceiling height mm -hmm. issue that you've got and, and bring the focus down slightly. And then in terms of brightness, I think you're right that we do have the potential for this to seem quite dark in mm -hmm. here. So the way in which we could counteract that is to buy uh, light the actual vertical surfaces in this room. So here with the with the wardrobes, we could integrate some mm -hmm. lighting into that. You've got the glass fronted. Yeah, they're going to be fluted, readed glass uh -huh. uh, doors. So I'll, I'll allow for lighting within those units. Mm -hmm. 
um, and I need you to supply me with the, the elevations, drawings and the elevations of course. what they're going to look okay. like at the right time. But for, for now, for first fix mm -hmm. purposes, um, that will be fine. Also around the desk area, potentially you'll have a picture above the desk there, yes, yeah. which we can make allowance for lighting and a lamp there would be really mm -hmm. nice as well. And I'm a fan of this <laughs> traditional sort of picture light. Um, your wallet is a like great example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've used okay. that a lot in, in our projects. I think it just adds a little bit of elegance and class to the space. Perfect. And then the window, you've almost got a whole wall of windows mm -hmm. there, which is amazing during the day, yeah. but at night time, that's going to feel like a big dark space. Yeah. So we need to try and emphasize those details if we can. It'd be nice to be able to pull, especially at nighttime when the headboard is sitting in front of it, that we can make it feel like there's space between the headboard and the window and, and mm -hmm. pull the space out at the lower level. Yeah, as so, you walk in. well, um, what can look really dramatic is maybe some up lights to the window. Mm -hmm. And we can do that in two ways, either using point sources, like mm -hmm. the little Luca fitting, or we can use a, a linear light source mm -hmm. to create a grazing effect. And you would build that into the window sill itself? Into the sill, okay. yeah, so that we would fit them into that. So that's something we'd need to incorporate fairly quickly given the changes to the windows and factor that yeah. into the drawings. I think the linear would work really well here. Mm -hmm. Behind the headboard, you just get this grazing effect up mm -hmm. behind. It'd be really subtle and that would actually provide quite a lot of illumination into mm -hmm. the room as well. And from the outside, if you have your blackout blinds up, that would look quite interesting yep. from the outside but you mentioned with the blackout down you won't see that yep. um, so let me allow for that some up lights within the windows so these notes are written in code my bad handwriting <laughs> so only i can <laughs> like decipher doctors, them uh, <laughs> yeah. prescriptions chris um, one of the things i have liked uh on projects we've worked on for clients is uh, the pir element oh yeah not being awoken by bright lights if you need to go to the kitchen for water mm. or go to the bathroom um, or if dogs are making unusual noises, checking on the dogs. So incorporating some level of... Uh, PIRs in PR. bedrooms, uh, clients do request it sometimes, mm. but you've got to be quite careful with it because you don't want to roll over in bed and suddenly the lights Certainly. come on. Yeah. So if we can have a PIR set underneath mm -hmm. a bedside table, it will only pick you up as you step out of the bed mm -hmm. um, and it could um, activate just a very low level light, which provides you with the amount of illumination you need to get from a to B. And with that light fixture itself, uh, the scene setting that it's on or the, the, the level of light that it's set to, is the PIR, it's a scene in itself so that that light can be brighter on other scenes when it's being yeah. used elsewhere. And okay, so it's, it's we, independently con controlled. All of that can be set during the programming. scene programming. Okay. Yeah, and it could be that after 11 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. it's only, only the PIR activates during that period until six o'clock in the okay. morning. Um, but we gen generally we would do all of those settings with you once mm -hmm. you're in the house um, and you started to understand how you're using the space. Yep. Um, to make it and work. with the PIR sensor itself, can you set <coughs> the responsiveness and the sort of the closeness at which it will react? Um, so you know just where you would step out of the bed, as opposed to being set off if the dogs are walking around the room at low level. Oh yeah, that's a good point. It well, it depends on the PIR which you're using. They had, they tend to have different settings. <coughs> but Excuse me. Yes, mm. you. Um, they do, there was some adjustability. Okay. Right, you were talking about the ensuite and what you were looking to achieve in there. Um, are these, this is the, these are the finishes, <coughs> are they? Excuse me, yes. So, um, natural wood for the vanities, large format tiles for the walls, so they're 160 by 278, so there'll be less seams, and then a brushed nickel finish for the fixtures and fittings. Um, there's no natural light. There will be 2.7 meter high ceilings, um, drop ceilings in these spaces so that we can use the um, the attic storage for water tanks. Mm -hmm. And how um, big will the grout line be? Uh, we're going to keep it as minimal as possible. Yeah. So we're talking a mil if possible. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just thinking with the down how good the, uh, the, <laughs> the uh, tile is going to be. If we were going to have some down lights skimming over that surface, because mm. it would be nice to highlight yep. the texture of that, we want to set that out based mm -hmm. on the tile format and uh, make sure that we're not getting things which are out of line with the, with the grout line. So that would be fine. Um, and so you'd want a tile set out or a pattern set out. If to, we could, yeah. it would be ideal. Yep, um, that's easy to do. And is this a niche? This is going to be a niche. Uh, and it's it, important to note, it's not going to, it's not necessary, it's not a niche, it's a shelf. Um, <laughs> so it's actually going to be wider at the top. So while it feels tighter, uh, and the shower is not that tight, it's 900 wide, but sort of at elbow height and above, it's going to feel uh, wider again, because it, the, so it's So that's open shelf. all the way yeah. up, is it? Yeah. And then you just have a shelf. Shelf. Okay, yeah. so it's so not there really is no opportunity we would for a like. niche, no. 
Now, if you feel strongly that it should be a niche as opposed to an open shop, mm -hmm. I can be convinced. Yeah. Um, uh, there's an argument to say it'd be quite nice to see the wall finish run mm -hmm. seamlessly through at low level and high level and just cut out mm -hmm. the niche. Uh, but on the, on the other side, it's nice to feel like you've got that extra width when you're in the shower. Mm. Um, it's a good option for us to allow for some accent lighting, mm -hmm. but we and could do you, it in another way. Would you prefer to see the accent lighting, the niche on this side, or would you prefer to see it on this side? Well, I think where, it, where you're showing it is mm -hmm. great, because like you say, coming in from the bedroom, you immediately see it. And I quite like the idea that it breaks up mm -hmm. that wall a little bit. Yeah. Um, but if you wanted to do just a shelf and then keep it open above, you could still do that, I think, just in uh, a section view here. That's the depth of the, the recess, mm -hmm. and you're doing a shelf running across. You could stop it short from the mm -hmm. back slightly, and then we have the lighting. light at the back. It would mean that they'd need to support that shelf from either end, mm -hmm. so we'd have to check with the builder that they're happy structurally that yep. they can do that. And then if we had the light there, it would softly graze up and down, mm -hmm. which would be quite interesting. I think you've probably got just about enough depth to do that. But yeah, if we speak to the, the builder about yep. that. Okay. And then the vanity unit, you've sent me details of this, which is great. Yep. And the mirror will be... It'll be wall to wall above the toilet system and the, the vanity unit. It'll be, a, 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 first and foremost, a storage so vanity. The vanity comes across here and then the system boxing is the same height? Yes. Like that? Well... The, we will be building the wall out in the in the next version of the drawing, so it'll run wall to wall. The vanity will sit proud of that. Okay. Um, so you're not actually going to see the cistern. Yeah. Um, uh, it'll it'll be concealed within the wall, the stud wall. Okay. Um, question: uh, Picture lights in bathrooms. Are there IP rated picture lights? Like, does your Wallace light come in an IP rated um, version? I'm not sure about IP rated picture lights, but not all areas of the bathroom require an IP rated mm -hmm. fitting. So, for example, here, obviously, we've no shower door on the shower. Mm -hmm. um, this is a great wall, yeah. perfectly centered on the vanity on the other side. For me, or there will be a towel rail on the wall, but it'll be at low level. Yeah. It does sort of, you know, if you're looking at the vanity and it's a full wall of mirrors, the wall behind you is fully visible. Mm -hmm. It sort of it, um, immediately well, jumps out as a, a location for a piece of art. Well, if your picture light point is over 60 centimetres away from your shower water, tray, okay. then you're outside of the IP zones. Okay, which so it would be. we yep. could then allow for that. And if it wasn't, you could always use a downlight in the ceiling to light towards mm -hmm. your artwork okay. anyway. So I think it'd be nice to allow for a picture light there. Um, do you do the wall light in a brushed nickel or a nickel finish? I think we do, yes. Okay, because mm -hmm. all of the fixtures are going to be that brushed nickel. Yeah. I think it'd be nice to... Yeah. stick with the theme even if we didn't for that sort of product we could look at custom finishes okay. um it just means that the lead time is longer mm -hmm. and then there might be some price increase okay. um, but um yeah so brush nickel mm. and you mentioned towel rail where on the elevation it's does that going to be go? close to the the shower at the end but at a low level yeah. and the elevations are seen through will have um that detailed on it so uh, we need to maybe allow for some mirror lighting mm -hmm. here. We could do something which wraps around the mirror or yep. you know, rather than maybe having a decorative wall light, we have a concealed light source. Nice project, that one. Yep, <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> here we go. So this image here is not really the same style mm. as the bathroom that you're doing here, but the concept of having a light source concealed behind a full width mirror yep. is quite interesting because this gives a really flattering lighting yep. effect. And it also just gives you a slightly cleaner look. You also have an issue here where you have a basin and then a toilet. So mm. if you wanted to position wall lights, you wouldn't be able to do it symmetrically, symmetrically across yeah. the wall. And so this sort of counteracts that issue. Okay. So we'd make allowance for that. And I haven't reviewed the information you sent me on the vanity unit. Is it all the uh, way down to the floor? I think it's likely to be a floor standing unit, uh, just from a space, uh, storage space requirement. Mm -hmm. So no space underneath. No. So if we want a Currently, low... but I'm a designer. <laughs> so. I'm just thinking I changed about my mind on an already basis. Option. Yeah. Because if we in the bedroom and we want to create that night mm. light, we've got the light underneath the bedside table, but what do we have in the bathroom? Mm. Potentially this shelf with the backlighting okay. could be linked to a PIR. Mm -hmm. Or we could have a couple of um, lights at low level, one underneath a towel rail, yep. and another one closer to the door. Yep. Um, or if your vanity unit didn't go to the floor, you could have um, a heavy underneath strip underneath, underneath, underneath there, it. Okay. lighting towards the floor. But let's assume now that it's, there's no space to do okay. that, and we just have the lighting um, in the wall instead. 
obviously I'm dropping the ceilings to 2.7 from 3.9. Would you like to include lighting along the around the perimeter as opposed to uh, down lights in the ceiling? How would you, for general lighting? That could be something we do in, in the shower here. If we wanted to light that tiled wall yep. using something other than down lights. Mm -hmm. uh, down lights will give you these sort of scallops, scallops of yeah, light. Yeah. Um, but we've actually got it in this project here, the linear light source. You can see yeah, you get by dropping the ceiling, light, yeah. we can create this um, recessed detail mm -hmm. at the edge, like a slot, and then the, the linear just grazes down. And would you do it just on one or two sides, or would you do it for the whole room? I'm not sure I would do it for the whole room, because I think it could complicate the backlight mm -hmm. into the mirror here. So maybe if it came down this wall here and then wrapped across there, it might be yep. quite interesting. It's quite a nice visual as well as you look mm. through. And also coming in here, if you had a slot running along that wall, you're sort of looking it's straight into it, it. Yep. and it's very difficult to conceal your light source. Okay. So I'm just going to do that in a different color. So we have to coordinate that with the builder. Yep. We'll, we'll provide a sketch detail of how you need it built. that's constructed. Yep. Yeah. It won't be technically how it's constructed mm -hmm. as in the materials that you're using to build it, but it will show the dimensions that we need in order to, to create mm. a nice lighting effect and conceal the light from view. And you should have a nice clean uh, surface. Uh, we won't be tiling after the ceiling's going. We're actually going to mm. run the 2.78 tiles up and then suspend ah, cool. the ceiling afterwards. So it'll be a really nice clean yeah. detail all Perfect. the way up. Is this a communal entrance? This is a communal okay. entrance. So that's nothing to do with north. you. No. We don't need to look at that area. It's just no. this is the main entrance for you. Exactly. And there's another company doing the control system. Yes, so we'll be there? working with IDS okay. uh, Lifestyle on the home automation. So audiovisual, okay. security, lighting controls. So your lighting designs will be, you'll be working alongside uh, Tass and his team. Okay, so we'll provide the them with details of all of the different mm -hmm. lighting circuits yep. that we're going to have and the dimming type mm -hmm. um, that we're going to use. And then that will allow them to then specify their equipment yep. to, for you to then... It's going to be the Crest front system that we're using. Okay, good. So in the hallway here, um, talk me through what we're dealing with finishes. So and solid furniture. finish on the doors and the door into the guest WC. Uh, a laundry cabinet, washer dryer, ironing board, iron storage, mm -hmm. cleaning products, and then coat and shoe storage. Do you envisage that you need any internal lighting? Uh, I areas? think yes, there'll yeah. be internal lighting in all of the joinery, especially in uh, the laundry element. Um, yeah, and are they floor to ceiling? Floor to ceiling, they will be, again, 2.7 meter high units. I do want sort of a sense of arrival into the space, so there'll be featured artwork in the, in the space, probably above a bench. Uh, I, had, I like a shoes off house, so, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, somewhere to sit down, take your shoes off, put them back on. So the, sorry, the shoes would go into one of into these one of those cupboards. cupboards. Yeah. Okay. And the bench here, you on can sit wall. on and yeah. take your shoes off. Exactly. Built in bench or freestanding? Freestanding. Yeah. Okay. Freestanding piece of furniture. I wanted to feel quite light in the space. Um, I want to, this will have double glass doors into mm -hmm. the, the living area. I want this to feel fairly dramatic. Um, when you come in to have enjoy the view back onto the garden through the bay window and uh, the French door is off the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And would this be a mirror here or a picture? Yeah, a picture. Okay. So we'll have a picture light point there. There's a real sort of um, difference of opinion over picture lights. Mm. Some clients really love them mm -hmm. and it's quite a more traditional look. Yep. Um, other clients can't stand them. Yeah. So you can light pictures using a directional down light from the ceiling as well, yeah. which works really well because you get a nice spot of light mm -hmm. into the center of the picture. But the new picture lights like this one, the LED one, mm -hmm. they're called the Wallace. The, um, the light source inside is an LED. It's got an optic mm -hmm. over the LED and that concentrates and focuses the light. So it pushes the light down the down. canvas. Yeah. So it actually provides you a really great light effect onto the art because a, a normal picture light you know, mm. or traditional picture light lights the top, top section yeah, of a picture never, yeah, never or the wall the above yeah. um, or, you get or either side because it's yeah. too wide um, and what's your opinion on mm -hmm. using the more traditional picture lights like the Wallace um, in the rooms that have the higher ceilings and where we've dropped mm -hmm. the ceiling to 2.7 using your ceiling spots to light the art um, is that an approach or yeah no definitely that's that would make perfect sense to me mm. and I guess it would also keep your wall clean uh, as you look through. You could always allow for both if you yep. if you thought maybe you want to see what the space is going to look like first. It's, it's finished, quite yep. easy at this stage to allow for an extra cable, yep. um, whereas adding it in once everything's complete yep. is much, much mess, harder. Yep. So, okay, let's, um, in that case, allow for the spotlights here. So you would do the spots at in the higher ceilings or the Wallace in the higher? 
I think the wallet in the highest ceilings. Okay. Yeah. So th we have this one is three point seven as well. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's just that area. It's just which that is area is dropping. Yeah. Okay, got it. And these are solid doors. So if they're solid covered doors, then I would maybe use a directional light to light towards the front of those okay. as well, and we can highlight the material that you have. Okay. And then the glass doors here. Mm -hmm. It might be quite nice to try and frame your view into the living space there. Um, one way you could do that is to maybe have a little up light either side, either side of the okay. glass doors. And would you do that in the hallway side or in the living room side? I, I guess because the ceiling is lower on the inside, you would naturally do it on the yeah. inside. It slightly depends on how the doors are hung, mm -hmm. but I would imagine that it would work better on the hallway side. Here. They'll be pivot doors, so they won't be mounted to the, to the walls. straight. Mm. Okay. Oh, so at the top and the bottom. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've mm. got the guest WC off the hallway. Mm -hmm. I want this to be fairly dramatic. I haven't decided on the wall treatments as yet. Um, it will be the wooden floor continued uh, through into that space, but maybe we could play with uh, linear lighting behind mirrors. Uh, yeah. Play with the depth and reflections. How do the walls work in here in terms of the... We have full flexibility. Obviously, we have to incorporate a cistern into it, but we could then clad that wall mm -hmm. uh, however we want. They are wall-mounted taps in the space with a floating vanity on the wall in front of it. Um, so we could light below it or have some wall lights either side of it mm. uh, with a picture, again, very open to uh, options. And if there's a particular lighting detail that you think would look mm. really nice in a room of this format. So this is your main guest fun. WC yeah. and it needs to look good. I've got a picture in here. I mean, this, um, mm -hmm. It's quite interesting where you have a hanging mirror, which is backlit, also combined with some decorative hanging lights. It depends if you're looking for like a clean look mm. where it's quite minimal or you want it to be slightly more decorative and intricate. It's probably going to be fairly loud and fairly decorative. Okay. I think it's the one space that you can sort of <clears throat> create impact mm. and a bit of wow. I mean, this offset pendants mm. is quite popular yeah. at the moment in a powder room and things like that. It looks... You know, it just gives a, a sense of luxury. Yep. I'll just put that in there for now. Um, and, maybe and I'll send you the detailed elevations of those spaces as they are now. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe you could offer an opinion on what, what you think should, should happen there. Would you put this on a PIR rather than having yeah. light switches so that nobody's having to faff around and looking for the lights? Yeah. I think that would be nice. And then we would locate the, the dimmers remotely somewhere else so that you could... Control. You might still have a switch in the room because um, I imagine this would be on the Crestron system mm -hmm. still. And so the PIR could automatically activate a scene. Yeah. Um, and in the evening when you're having a dinner party, that could be quite a nice moody mm -hmm. scene. Um, but the, PR, uh, the, the keypad on the wall would allow you to override that. So if you st still wanted it very bright, okay. you could select the bright scene. Maybe in here it would be nice to create some openings above the mm -hmm. WC. So you could then put objects yep. into those recesses and we could integrate some lighting. So I could send you some ideas of what we could do there, yep. some example images, and we can develop it. That'd be very helpful. Should we move into the, the kitchen and the living space here? Yep. So this was a, originally a, a kitchen, separate living, dining, and uh, another bedroom. So it's been completely opened. Um, we've already taken it back to brick. The uh, steel work has been done. Um, it's southwest facing, so there's an awful lot of light during the day, mm. uh, which is wonderful, but also has its drawbacks when you're trying to balance lighting scenes. Uh, and because yeah. the, the room is fairly deep, it, you have that very bright spot to the front, and then the light gets mm. less as you, as you travel back mm. through the room. It's going to be about entertaining, relaxing with friends, glass of wine, cuddling the dogs, mm. watching TV, hosting some dinner parties, and hopefully uh, cooking a bit more in the kitchen. Yeah. Well, with the natural light coming in, like you say, that's really great. And you've also mentioned earlier that you want quite warm, mm. atmospheric lighting. I'm more about sort of candlelight and soft, mm. warmer tones of lighting than some of the, the more white lights that yeah. we would use. In We've projects. got to be a little bit careful because daylight is quite a blue color. Mm -hmm. um, it's very stark in comparison to what we would use in the evening time. Mm. So if you were to go for quite a warm, um, color temperature for your artificial lighting mm. during the day when you're using it it can almost look orange yep. it just looks it too much of a stark contrast so that's maybe where we should use a combination of different color temperatures mm -hmm. maybe during the day you, you're more likely to use your down lights yep. and therefore um, we use down lights at 2700 kelvin 
so that compared to the sort of quite blue daylight, there's not too much contrast. Mm. And then in the evening, you dim down your down lights or even turn them off, mm. and you introduce your lamp light, uh, your linear lighting in your joinery, okay. and that's what gives you the, yeah exactly, okay. and that's going to give you your warmer, mm -hmm. softer lighting effect. Okay. Um, so some adaptability uh, will be quite important. Mm -hmm. We've got the elevation here with the bookshelves. Mm -hmm. We're detailing this at the moment. The TV is no longer going to be to the side of the, the fireplace. It'll be above. <coughs> and I'm imagining a full run of joinery side to side. So I should be able to send you uh, detailed elevations of that early next week. Okay, so for the time being, what I'm going to do is just mark allowance for lighting mm -hmm. on the drawing so the electrician knows that we're going to want some cables to mm -hmm. that area. And because the joinery units will go in more or less last minute, yep. we've got time to develop those ideas between yep. us. So I think two circuits of lighting there because... Even there will be multiple functions to this. So there yeah. will be storage, uh, there will be display of art and objects and, and bits and pieces and trinkets I have picked up. But uh, I do see there being a functioning bar element to it. So, you know, your gins, your whiskies mm -hmm. on display. I like the idea of people arriving and almost, you know, inviting themselves to making it uh, to make a drink in a sort of a display area um, okay so maybe factor that into what we're going to require from a lighting and number of circuits point of view yeah so i might actually add in another circuit then based mm. on that information um because not only do we want to be able to light for different functions but also a layered lighting uh, effect mm. even in a joinery can work really well and we will have a low level <laughs> sort of a more contemporary fire uh, surround going for a contemporary so that I can drop the height of the TV rather than having this arched neck experience when you're sitting on the yeah. sofa trying to look up uh, because it's a Victorian property if you put a traditional fireplace a large TV would be very high above it um, but that may allow for scope to have your uh, is it your Luca lights or something yeah. in to wash the front of the it'll be a marble surround to the fireplace but then you get the two different lighting elements you get the beautiful flame the warmth of the flame from the gas fireplace and then the surround being lit up and then obviously you have the tv above yeah i'll study the elevation for that mm. and see whether we need to integrate any other lighting into that feature or not okay perfect position for some artwork yep on, i imagine a large canvas here. on that wall i see this being a sort of a reading nook i'm imagining a pair of chairs and a small sure. uh, coffee table on, on that side it's great obviously when people are around that you can converse from different angles so if there's a pair there at the mm. sofa here and maybe a swivel chair on this side yeah. uh, there's plenty of scope for people to sit around have a conversation play a board game so i'm going to allow for some five amp sockets yep. um, the five amp sockets will allow you to plug a lamp in mm -hmm. and then be able to dim that through your lighting system so rather than just plugging it into the normal socket and then switching it on and off yep. Dimming your lamps will add so much mm -hmm. value to how you enjoy this space because um, it can instantly change how the room feels. Yep, yep agreed. Um, I imagine myself having a large tree or a plant uh, behind the sofa. That's cool. Yeah. Um, uh, again, very lucky to have 3.9 meter height ceilings. So I think playing with the height and bringing a visual element sort of midway through mm -hmm. the room, maybe something at two or 2.5 meters high would be a nice touch. So it's above your eye level. You're not blocking the view out through the bay windows onto the garden, and it sort of breaks the space. Could be difficult to get into in the, the property. Well, <laughs> we can get it through the, the garden itself. Let's allow for some spike lights mm -hmm. then. Um, to uplight it. To uplight okay. it. Um, and I imagine the canopy to be fairly high, and so that it's not obstructing the view out as you walk in. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just another, another layer. That'll look amazing. So we also allow for maybe some sockets in the floor here, mm -hmm. uh, lamp points. Would we maybe want a a decorative hanging light in the center of I think main space. I think the space calls out for um, a decorative pendant again you need to see how that works in relation to a tree canopy and the mm. conflict that that might have and the height that they would sit at mm. uh, and I guess another decorative pendant potentially over the um, the dining yeah this one building. maybe slightly smaller more yeah. focused onto the table mm -hmm. maybe hung a little lower as well yeah. I think I would also allow for some spotlights to light towards the coffee mm -hmm. table as well, because that will give you a nice central focus. Agreed. And if you put some flowers on the table, then yep. they would look amazing. I like the way the bonquette seating is built into the window bay. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. And I wondered whether we should, uh, with the windows here, mirror Simple what treatment. we're doing yep. at the front of the house with, with that linear strip just concealed mm -hmm. to give an uplighting effect. I guess there's a consistency there as well. When these doors, these are glass, and if that door is open in the evening, you're getting that sort of same effect either sides of the property. Yeah. Um, and it looks considered and it looks well thought out. 
what I'm doing here is just building up the main elements mm -hmm. for you. What I'm sketching onto the plan won't be the only lighting no, you no. have. Yeah. Um, I need to fill the gaps in. But it's important that we focus the light onto those key features first okay. and then we work out how everything else mm. works around it. Uh, there will be a piece of art on this wall between the dining room and the kitchen. Again, I think it's the first elevation you really see as you come through. You're going to get the first and foremost the view out over the, the garden mm -hmm. and then you're going to catch the wall between the dining seating and the double doors onto the garden itself. So I think it's, a, it's an opportunity um, to showcase the piece yeah. of art. So put a picture light point there. Yep. Um, I think if we did any more hanging decorative lights, it might become a bit complicated yeah. in here. So <clears throat> in the kitchen over the island, um, I would go for architectural lighting mm -hmm. there instead. I agree. I'm actually not a fan of pendants over an island where you have a hob, because obviously there are splashes, uh, splashes in, in Greece, and even with the best mm. uh, extractors, it doesn't catch everything. So I don't want That's to be wiping point. my <laughs> glass pendants or whatever they would be weekly to, to clean them. We saw downstairs um, the glow of light underneath mm -hmm. the bar. Mm -hmm. That would work perfectly in this setup because yep. here in the dining area and in the living space, you'd look back at the kitchen yes. yep. and you see just a soft lighting effect mm -hmm. onto the stools. Um, and the, the stools are quite slim in their form, really beautiful, just brush brass uh, feet on it so that you can, you can really enjoy the marble mm -hmm. um, and the expanse of the marble underneath the bar so you have nothing actually blocking mm. the light. And is that the fabric? That's the fabric for it as well, so you'll get a really nice light, um, yeah. it's a sort of a matte, you're not going to get a sheen from it or any high reflection and that the, the marble itself is going to be uh, a matte honed uh, finish as well. And if we are lighting down towards the floor mm -hmm. then potentially there's issues with reflecting off of floor finishes mm -hmm. as well but so the flooring we've gone for is actually a double brushed floor it's matte it you're not i don't think you're going to get any mm. real reflection off of it well the the light source will actually really enhance the, the color texture of this the color. wood yeah mm. um and give it an extra warmth as well which would be nice and then the other two finishes we have in the kitchen are the joinery itself and one of the elevations will be this french polished oak and mm -hmm. then we're using a, a liquid metal finish for one of the elevations, which I think is a, an opportunity for you to um, make it pop as a feature. Mm, I love that. Mm. That's great. So sometimes you can light these uh, surfaces directly mm -hmm. to highlight them, and other times you might light something else to create more of a contrast. But yeah, that's really interesting. And that's going to be the surrounds of the glass fluted cabinets that are above the sink run. Um, again, I guess an opportunity for you to add some drama and layer uh, some lighting in there as well. Yeah, I was looking at these um, details which you sent me through earlier mm. um, of, the, of how those cabinets will work and I thought integrating some lighting within those glass fluted um, cupboards would be nice mm -hmm. um, because then we'll link those lights to the control system um, and they can then form part of the lighting scenes mm. um, and we'd see a nice glow of light coming out through the glass and the way that they're fluted, yeah. you could put, you know, all sorts of things into those yeah. covers. It doesn't have to always look pretty, pretty yeah. um, but with the lighting glowing through it mm. from the outside, it will still look amazing. Yeah. And you get that soft, warm mm -hmm. look as opposed to a solid wall of, of joinery. Yeah. And um, it'll feel a lot lighter. Um, up lights on top of the kitchen units mm -hmm. are going to be uh, quite important. Um, and would you take them the whole way to the back and then? Yeah, I would do up? it all the way along that that back run mm -hmm. there so you have a consistent lighting effect. And because obviously I, I forget the height of the kitchen, I think it's about 2.75, 2.8, um, and we're going to have a cornice dropped. Are you going to catch the cornice in a weird way or is it going to mm. wash only the initial part of the wall and then we, we maintain mm -hmm. the, um, the consistency of lighting around the cornice? Um, it won't do it in a weird way. It will light the cornice, mm -hmm. um, but the light source we'll use um, will have a very diffused light. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be directed at the cornice. It's going to be giving you a flood of light onto the ceiling. So mm -hmm. it will it'll light it very softly. You'll get a nice wash of light onto the ceiling and then that will bounce light back down into the space. So okay. it will um, add uh, lots of light to the room. It will make the ceiling feel higher mm -hmm. as well. Not necessarily higher, but it will accentuate the height. Um, and, and the sense of uh, space that you have. And I would mirror that linear light on top of the units with one underneath the cabinets mm -hmm. as well uh, to light down onto the work surface. So rather than using point sources mm -hmm. under cupboard lights, we can just use a single linear light source um, and that will give you your task light. And would you set that to the front face of the, the 
what am I to do then? So would you say right up against the back wall? Um, I think I would push it towards the back wall mm -hmm. so that we light uh, more dramatically mm -hmm. that marble that you have. Yep. Um, you'll still get a nice, um, effective task light. And do you set the lighting in a particular uh, amount left to right so that you're not washing the, because this will have a, a wood panel that runs right into the corner and then obviously mm. we have the metallic finish that will run back in here um, <coughs> they could become two elements that catch the lighting yeah sometimes um, yeah if you run it all the way up to that surface you mm. get a flare of light yeah. on the sides you can't stop that completely mm. um, but yeah we would normally stop it slightly short okay some people like the flare other people don't mm. sort of a personal preference thing but yeah i think if we stop it sort of 30 mil short that okay will just soften softens that, it okay um, and, and make it less of an eye-catching feature okay and um, obviously we've got these two <coughs> large French doors that lead onto the, the patio and then down into the garden. Mm. How would you propose lighting or making a feature out of the doors? I think we could do what we've done with the critical glass doors here mm -hmm. um, and have a, a couple of little up lights in the floor there. Okay. And again, that would frame your view into the exterior. Mm -hmm. I think I've got a nice um, picture in the brochure here of another project where we've done something similar. Um, you can see these up lights Spotlights, here. Yeah. This is the critical glass, but the idea is that you create a little flare of light either side. Um, in twilight, that looks amazing because mm -hmm. you see through to the garden. And if we can light something outside or create a little glow of light outside, that will prevent you from having this mirrored effect, effect. on okay. the glass. Um, so maybe if we had a couple of wall lanterns out here. Mm -hmm. Would that be sufficient to reduce the the glow or because it's looking mm -hmm. out onto a fairly large communal garden mm -hmm. that doesn't have lighting. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be difficult because mm -hmm. you're obviously not able to add lighting mm -hmm. to that space out there. These lanterns here will provide a soft illumination onto, onto the, the floor terrace. here, depending yeah. on which one you go for. Mm -hmm. You could go for, you know, a surface mounted spotlight above the doors. I don't know if there's any restrictions on there will be a conservation area mm -hmm. and there'll be um, uh, the guidelines of the garden committee as well. So chances are you almost have to sort of live with yeah. what you've got here. Okay. Um, but the wall lights will help, certainly help. Mm -hmm. um, they won't prevent that mirrored effect. Usually we'd want to try and light the floor immediately outside the glass yep. is the first way of breaking that and then have something lit in the in the distance. But okay. it's just not an option for you yep. in this particular case. So it sounds like <coughs> what you need from me next are so some detailed elevations, mm. in particularly for the joinery elements in the living room, um, how the niche is going to be constructed, the vanity unit in the bathroom and the wall with the storage, and again, detailed joinery uh, <coughs> drawings for the, the hallway and uh, the bedroom. Yeah, I think we've sort of got together the main concepts mm -hmm. of what we want to achieve is a case of just detailing those out okay so um i'll put together a list of the bits of information i need from you amazing and then give you some time to pull it all together those. in the meantime i'll start putting this together and developing it and then we can touch base to review everything together great and we can look at the um and i guess at that point it'd be good to have a, <laughs> a meeting with maybe the home automation company on site yeah. um and talk through any uh, control issues or yeah. uh, requirements for, for their design specifications as well. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'm really looking forward to being client side uh, <laughs> on, on this journey and not having to worry about uh, detailing it all myself. Mm. Well, we're looking forward to working with you on it. Thank you. Great.